Today on Limitless TV, we get to talk about public speaking. It is the number one fear in the world that people have. So today I'm going to share with you some of my most powerful tips and tricks to help you learn how to speak powerfully and confidently. So today we're covering our tips and tricks of how to present powerfully from stage. And here I'm just in my own private basement stage. I've done presentations here. I've done them upstairs in my great room with a hundred people. I've done them in front of a thousand people. I've presented over a thousand times. I've probably put on who knows how many hundreds of events over the course of the last decade. And what I want to share with you today is I want to focus on two main set of tips that will help you be a better, more competent and capable speaker. So the first thing that I want to do today is I just want to address this one, overcoming nervousness. To become an authority, you've got to get really clear that it is just a game of confidence. You might think I need a degree, I need a piece of paper that says I'm smart enough and I'm good enough or I can be able to do this. That's old school society based thinking. What makes you an expert is you choosing into being one based on your natural gifts and passion where you are collecting natural organic experience that actually has you being that expert. For example, after I had bought 10 pieces of real estate and started putting on presentations, I felt that that made me an expert enough in my home to sit in front of two people and put together really my first little real estate club. After I had bought 25 homes, I took the stage and started teaching people how to do it. After I bought 100 homes, my stages got bigger. At what point did I become an authority? I became an authority the moment I chose into becoming an authority. Well, what I'm going to do today in talking about body language is this is what's going to determine whether or not you're coming off like an authority figure or not. Body language. Let's first talk about the fact that we are trying to get our body language, our hands, our voice, our message, our face, and our energy to all align. We want them saying the exact same thing. So let's run through some of the basic concepts here. Is uh, First of all, hands. What does this communicate? Sometimes we present doing these funny things with our hands. Body language 101, I'm hiding something. Body language, I'm closed. Body language, I'm nervous. Body language, I'm inexperienced. I don't know what to do with my hands. Do you want to know what to do with your hands? One of two things. This is one of them. When you're talking, you don't need to use your hands. But if you are going to talk using your hands, I want you right now to stand up with me and I want you to hold your two foot by two foot box. You got your box? This box, your hands are not allowed inside of it most of the time. And for today's video, they're just not allowed in it, okay? Which means that when I'm talking with my hands, this is the most open body position. This is a good body position. This, this. It's almost like there's this force field with magnets attached and my hands cannot get no matter what I do, they cannot get closer than two feet to one another. That's your hand body language. So keep your hands apart or keep them at your side. And you can talk with your hands. Just make sure you've got your magnetic field that is keeping them apart. Number two, your face. Animate your face. You're not just having a boring conversation with someone else out here. When you're actually sitting down and presenting information to a small group of people, animate. Now here's what it means. I need your face to match your emotion. If you're excited, I don't want to see a frown. I got this one lady that every time she has an emotional, tender part of her presentation, she smiles. And it was the saddest day of my life. That's a big disconnect. What you want is for your expression on your face to match the energy, the message, and the emotion of what you're feeling. Okay, number three with body language is called stage geography. Now today, as you're watching this video, this side of the stage represents the past. It's the stage right. Stage left represents the future. Why? Because we read books starting on this page to this page. The past, the future. This is important because if I'm presenting and I'm sharing something sad in my life, I'm sharing it right here. If I'm talking about the future, where I'm going in my excitement, I'm standing over here. And then there's always the back of the stage, the front of the stage, and off the stage. And here's how you use all three of those. The back of the stage is you as the authority of uh, teaching. You'll often have a whiteboard that's on this side of the stage, not this side. 
because this represents the future and the promise of possibility. And when you write things on that board, it means that it's important. And so you're standing here, you're writing, you're taking notes, and this is you as the authority. You're not suggesting ideas or concepts, you are telling them. The very tip of the front of the stage, this is your strong authority position. This is when you are talking directly to your people. And most importantly, when you're connecting. I don't want to be the man on a suit on the stage. First of all, you should dress your truth, which means that you should dress in a way that honors you, that is authentic. And when I want to really connect with my audience, I'm doing it right here. I'm not the authority, I'm not on stage, I'm out in the audience, I'm putting my hand on your shoulder, I'm saying, I'm relating to you, I see you, I'm connecting with you. So, a little trivia. If I'm telling a really sad part of my story, where am I standing? Right there. If I'm sharing the solution that changed my life, where am I standing? Right here. If I'm teaching and educating people, I'm stage back, I'm on the whiteboard. If I'm declaring powerfully, I'm right here front and center. And if I'm connecting with my audience, I'm doing that with him right here. So friends, that is some information that you have, first of all, on body language. And ultimately, I want them all to match. So another part of body language actually does step into what is your message and what is the energy that you're projecting. When you're out there communicating with your audience and you're teaching and educating and being with them, what are they feeling from you? I want your feeling and your energy to match your message. If you're saying something excited, then I want your energy to be what? If you're doing something enthusiastic, please don't share it like this. You know, and it was just so excited for me when I finally figured out the solution that changed my life. We don't want to hear that. We got warning bells going off saying, liar, there's something wrong with you. Dude, check in. I want everything to align in what you're doing. Okay, so this is the first part that is basically the concept of body language is you want to be watching your hands. You want to be watching your face. You want to be watching your stage. Uh, your stage geography, you want to be checking in your energy. And one more thing that I want to talk about now is posture. Your shoulders, just like an exercise, are rolled up and back, and you are standing tall. What does this communicate? What does slouching communicate? What does slouching my facial muscles communicate? Some of you are emotionally expressively challenged, and I'm inviting you to get in front of a mirror to kind of watch and take inventory and ask for feedback. Feedback is breakfast of champions when you're learning how to present. And so stand tall and learn how to stand confidently and move. Now in a moment, I'm gonna give you a really big bonus because the second tip that I wanna go into today is I wanna talk about the four different personality types that you can leverage from stage because know this, your audience is falling asleep every two minutes. You need a state change. It's not just where you're moving your body, it's not just having the right body language, but it is how you're communicating. Ne coming at you next, I'm gonna teach you the four different dominant personality types on how you'll connect with everyone's Myron Briggs in the audience so you can form meaningful connection. Okay, this is tip number two, and I'm calling it a bonus because most people are not gonna teach you what I'm about to right now. There are four dominant personality types that you are leveraging and speaking from when you're on stage. Everyone you meet in life is going to come from one of these four. We can take the 64 different Meyer Briggs combinations and break it down into the fact that inside of people, you're gonna see these four personalities. And the reason why this is important is because you need to know the audience. And when you're speaking to an audience, you need to be able to speak to as many people as you can and only polarize the people that you're supposed to. So the first personality type is called warrior. What is it? Warrior. And here's what warrior is. This is your dominant uh, type A personality that wants to take the world by storm and crush it. These are people on commission, they're in sales, these are movers and shakers, these are the people on your team that make stuff happen now. Um, if anything, these are the individuals that are going to go too fast, they're going to light a fire and they're going to burn the forest down on accident because they got so excited. Those people are in the audience and there's something they want to hear from you. Next, the opposite of that is you've got your healer. Your healer is your personality type that is calm, passive, non-aggressive. Um, they are natural healers. They want to give love. They want to nurture. They want to protect. They're sensitive, and sometimes they suffer from a lot of that negative energy empathically hitting them in a very difficult way. Healers, another, and, and, and healers, there's more healers in the world than there are warriors. Next, you have Oracle. 
Your oracle, these are your blueprints. These are your, your tax people, your engineers. These are your brainiacs. These are your rocket scientists. They understand their world based in numbers, statistics, percentages. They're often disconnected from feelings, not always, but they pass everything through the ether of the mind and they're very logically oriented. Very important people. They're also probably as much of a minority as you have warriors. And then, number four, you have your visionaries. Your visionary is your personality type that could care less about the details. They want to have fun and they want to have fun now. So they want to, when you're speaking to them, if you can't actually do something exciting and enthusiastic every few minutes in your presentation, your visionaries are going to die on the vine. They're like, oh, help me. I'm being lectured to death by an oracle. These two are opposites and these two are opposites and some people have all four, but most have one dominant and a secondary or some type of tertiary trait. All people that you meet are gonna fall into one of these categories. So how do you speak to all of them? I will show you. Your warriors. You need to have moments where you tap into your inner warrior. Now, by the way, if you're watching this, you're like, but Chris, I don't have warrior in me. Oh, trust me, you do. And if speaking and presenting is important, you get to develop it and you get to learn how to do it authentically. Here's how you tap into warrior. Warrior is about fast, whereas healer is about slow. And so the warrior is going to raise the volume. They're going to raise their energy. I stomp when I'm on stage just like that. I mean, my warrior shows itself with strong, hard, fast body movements. And I have my moments. And guess what this is? It's a state change. If I just was came coming from a healer moment, and all of a sudden I get myself fired up and I'm in the stage and I'm making things happen. I'm talking to you. Guess what's happening? I'm connecting with the warriors that are like, oh yeah, right on. Okay, now I'm finally hearing you. Now I'm feeling you. Now, by the way, when you go into that warrior mode, if you have too much, you might shut down the healers. So you get to express the sensitive side. You get to express the part of you that is calm. And remember that a lot of where that happens is right here. Often when I'm connecting with healers, it's going to happen when I'm in the audience and off the stage. Some might call that unprofessional. But for me, if I can't connect with my audience, then why am I there at all? Connecting means being willing to be vulnerable. Connecting means willing to share things that might have otherwise a privacy setting where they're not sacred or inappropriate to share, but they kind of almost feel a little inappropriate because they're precious. They're your struggles. They're the hard moments of your life. Healers are going to stand on this side of the stage when they're talking about the, the difficulties and the hardships they've had. And then as a healer, I'm going to be in the audience with you, which might look like this. Hey, friend, I see you. I'm connecting with you. This is my hand on your shoulder. Trust me, it's your shoulder. It's okay. The safe touching kind, okay? Okay, so this is where I'm going to connect with you in that way. Okay, number three. Oracles. Oracles are taking place right here. This is where they're laying out simple principles. And as an oracle, you have to remember that you cannot oracle the people to death. There's only so much information they can take before they lose it. It's not how much content you have to present. It's how well you can quality-wise present very little information that will stick with them. And that'll change from one venue to another. If it's a lecture hall, there's going to be more Oracle. If you're doing Limitless with me and it's a three-day transformational event, in 45 minutes, I'm only going to be sharing six minutes worth of powerhouse ideas. And the rest of the time is going to be spent actually displaying and practicing and experiencing them, right? So Oracle, you got to make sure that this is not your dominant personality. This is the fastest way. No matter how good your information is, you will lose your audience if you Oracle these people to death. And then finally, the visionaries. You've got a group of people in that audience that are screaming for fun. All right, everyone, stand up. Go ahead and find a partner. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Put your hands in the air. Turn to the person on your right. Give them a back massage. Hey, put your arms around the person next to you left and right. Give them a pat on the left or right. Turn to them and say, thank you for being here. Thank you for being there. Turn to the person on the left. Give them a high five and say, you are limitless. Your visionaries want to have, they want to get physical. They want to get active. They want to stand up and they want to have fun. And I'm going to be honest with you. If I'm ever going to speak anywhere on the planet on any topic, I'm going to pray it doesn't have to be behind a lectern separating me from the audience and that it's not a PowerPoint. Slide 148. Take notes on the thing I'm about to tell you. Your visionaries are dead. You lost them a long time ago. I want to spend time here, 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 and here 
not equally, but taking my audience into account. Know your audience. Are you presenting to a group of healers? Even they want to see you mix it up with these other energies. If you're speaking to a group of doctors and engineers, mix it up a little bit. If you can, get in the habit of every two minutes having a pattern interrupt by allowing them to see these different sides of the personality that I promise is inside of you, and you combine it with the right kind of body language, you are gonna crush it. Those are my tips for you today on public speaking. Thanks for joining today and watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I've got more videos like this coming your way. Um, I even put on a regular course a few times a year. It's called Mentor Academy. And if you're looking at becoming a mentor, if you want to become a professional speaker, a professional facilitator, then drop that in the comment below and uh, click the link so that we can get you some information and do some hands-on training for three days on how to help you step into your full speaking power.